there have been just so many graphics cards released in the last year that I wanted to give you guys my tier list for budget GPUs. And not just a superficial tier list that has no substance. Now every YouTuber loves to show how much FPS you can get with a 5090 or AMD's new 9070 XT, but who really has $800 to $3,000 to spend on a new GPU for their budget build? Well, for those of you who don't, this tier list is curated for you. Now, because the 50 series prices from NVIDIA are ridiculous and AMD so far has kind of bowed out of the upper tier and lower tier range, there's only a handful of cards that actually meet the criteria of being under $500. So to give you guys more options, I included a couple of 4,000 series NVIDIA cards as well as AMD's 7700 XT, which thankfully can still be found for well under $500. So to start, Here's the GPUs we'll be testing. First and newest of the bunch is NVIDIA's RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte version, which realistically is the only 5060 Ti model you should consider buying. Next from NVIDIA, we have the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte model and the RTX 4060 8 gigabyte. Now from Intel, we have both of the Battle Mage GPUs as the B580 and the B570 coming in with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and 10 gigabytes of VRAM respectively. And lastly, and it hasn't arrived yet, I'm still waiting on it at this point in the video, but we will have a Radeon RX 7700 XT 12 gigabyte. And the reason I included that is I just didn't feel right making this video without a single AMD GPU in the lineup. So what sort of system we'll be testing these budget GPUs in? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's not a 9800X3D with high-end DDR5 RAM. Here's what it is. AMD's Ryzen 7 5700X and some CL16 3600 RAM. Let's be honest, if you're looking for a GPU that's under $500, you probably don't have the money to build a high-end system. So before we build the PC and start testing, let's talk about our criteria to create our tier list. Here's the breakdown of my scoring system. First is price, and just like all the others, is gonna be scored from zero to 10. In this instance, a perfect score of 10 would be a $0 GPU, and a score of 0 will be a $500 GPU. And the score for the price is weighted at 30% of the overall GPU score. Next, we have the FPS score, and this is going to be split between 1080p and 1440p. And the way that we're going to be scoring the FPS is we're going to be normalizing it based on the top performer of those GPUs. So whatever the top performer is, that will be marked as 10, and everything else will be scored relative to that score. Between the 1080p score and the 1440p score, that's gonna be a total of 40% of the total weight of the GPU score. So this is the most important part of the GPU score, which makes sense because it really is all about the performance. The next piece of the pie is ease of use. Now this is a subjective measurement and it's all about how easy it is to find and install drivers, as well as how easy it is to tune the performance of your GPU. And since not that many people actually tune their GPUs and a lot of people do automatic driver updates, we're only marking this as 10% of the total GPU score. The fourth factor is GPU outputs. Now more and more people have multiple monitors to be able to watch their favorite show, look at Discord, maybe watch their favorite streamer while they're playing games. So having multiple monitor outputs is really important. And for that reason, we've also marked the weight of outputs at 10% of the total score. The final factor is GPU power consumption. Now to the average person, this may seem inconsequential, but the more power your GPU consumes, the higher your energy bill is gonna be, the bigger power supply you need to feed your system, and the more power it consumes, the more heat it generates, so you're gonna need even better case airflow to keep that GPU and all your other components nice and cool. I also put the weight for this factor at 10% of the overall GPU score.
All right, the results are in. First, let's take a quick look at the prices. The 5060 Ti 16GB came in at the very top of the list and at our maximum allowed $500, with the 4060 Ti and 7700 XT both coming in at just below that at $430 each. And these are the prices that I paid to buy them, not their actual MSRP, so the pricing may not make total sense if you're just looking at MSRP. So not a lot of points for those cards, but we do have the Intel Arc GPUs coming in at just $350 and $225 for the B580 and B570 respectively. If those can perform well, it could bode really well for their spot in the overall tier list. And lastly, we have the RTX 4068 GB, which came in at $310. That's kind of in the middle of the road in terms of pricing, so it needs to perform pretty well in order to get a decent spot on the list. And on to FPS. This is the biggest portion of the overall score and probably what you care about the most. So let's take a look at the 1080p and 1440p FPS numbers. And as a fun fact, did you know that according to Steam, roughly 60% of PC gamers are still playing at 1080p? It's a lot of people. Anyways, here's how they did on the FPS tests. First, we have the Furmark test. And as you can see, the 7700 XT and the 5060 Ti 16GB were standouts with great 1080p and 1440p FPS. With the 4060 Ti 8GB coming in slightly behind. The 4060, B580, and B570 all fell short in comparison to the leaders. Next, I ran the Call of Duty Black Ops 6 benchmark, and here you can see a similar story in the top runners. The 4060 Ti fell back a little bit compared to the 7700 XT and 5060 Ti, but more interestingly, the ARC B580 went from being well ahead in the Furmark test to being basically the same as the RTX 4060. You can see a similar trend here in the B570. It is significantly lower than it was in comparison to the 4060 in the Furmark test. After that, I ran each GPU through the built-in Forza Horizon 5 benchmark. And here's where things get really interesting. The 7700 XT fell all the way back into last place. And the 5060 Ti, 4060 Ti, and 4060 were all nearly identical at 1080p. Lastly, we have the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. In this game, the 5060 Ti was a real standout, with its 1440p score being nearly as high as the next closest 1080p score. The 7700 XT and 4060 Ti also performed really well at 1080p, and as expected, the Arc Series GPUs both came in last. Now that we've seen the FPS numbers, let's take a look at the ease of use. Now there's three things that I consider important for ease of use, and that's this. How easy it is to find and update the driver, can you tune the GPU within the built-in app, and can you adjust the fan speeds within the built-in app? And after going through this process with each of these GPUs, here's my opinion on ease of use. Nvidia came in with an 8 out of 10, Intel with a 9 out of 10, and AMD with a 9.5 out of 10. Now basically every GPU has an easy process for finding the latest driver, then the ability to update that driver through its app. The real distinguishing characteristic between these different brands is the ability to tune the GPU from their apps. Intel and AMD both have really good capabilities of tuning your GPU. You can mess with voltages, clock speeds, power limits, all of that and more from the app. AMD got a slightly higher score in the overall ease of use because of how fast the driver installed and it was a little bit easier to find that first driver off their website. Nvidia came in last year because the amount of things you can actually tune and adjust for performance is much more limited than the other two. Now you can do a one-click GPU tuning, which is also available on the other platforms, but you don't have any control over what it actually does. Moving on to the outputs. Unsurprisingly, every single one of these GPUs had the exact same number of outputs. Each GPU had one HDMI port and three display ports. We could get into the nitty gritty details on which standard each port is designed to, but for a budget GPU, it's really not important since none of them is powerful enough to play 4K games at high FPS. So each GPU got a score of 10 here. And last but not least is power usage. Looking at the maximum power output of each GPU, you can really see where the quality of the design and components comes into play. The RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte, the highest performing GPU overall, has a TDP of 180 watts, which is 65 watts lower than the 7700 XT. And the Intel Arc GPUs both used a lot more power for being the worst FPS in all the games. Again, power usage is not really that important to most gamers, but it's good to understand the efficiency of each of these GPUs when doing this overall comparison. Well, now that we have all the scores, let's take a look at the weighted scores. 
Coming in first with a margin of just 0.1 out of 10, the Intel Arc B570. While its performance seemed to leave a lot to be desired, the fact that it cost less than half the price of the 5060 Ti 16 gig meant that it had a huge lead in the cost factor. Next, we have a tie for second. The NVIDIA RTX 5060 Ti 16 gig and the RTX 4060 both came in with a 7.9. Again, this came down to the fact that they have the same ease of use, number of outputs, but the 4060 was significantly cheaper at $310 and only uses 115 watts at its maximum power capability. Tied for third or fourth if you want to get technical, the RTX 4060 Ti and the AMD RX 7700 XT. With both of them being the same price, the scores really came down to the FPS number and the power usage. The 7700 XT did beat out the 4060 Ti consistently at 1440p, but its power usage is so high that the 4060 Ti was able to make up for that. And in last place was the ARC B580 at a miserable 7.5. In this list, it just isn't cheap enough to really make up for the lackluster performance it displayed in the gaming benchmarks. With that in mind, let's take a look at the final GPU tier list. To start, Let's be honest, none of these GPUs belong in S tier. That should be reserved for the 9070 XTs and 5080s of the world. But in A tier, I had to put both our top scorer and our overall best performer. The B570 belongs up here just because it really is so ridiculously cheap. I mean, at that price point, you'd be looking at a B570 or an RX 6600, or possibly a very well used 20 series RTX GPU. And the 5060 Ti just dominated the group in terms of overall performance, so I think it deserved to be on the top, even though its price would never allow it to be on the top of this list in terms of scores. In B tier, we have the RTX 4060, which is being replaced by the RTX 5060, but that was not out in time for this video being filmed. The 4060 was consistently in the middle of the pack for performance with a very reasonable $310 price. In the C tier, we have the RTX 4060 Ti and the RX 7700 XT. Both of these GPUs are just too expensive compared to how they perform, and we don't even need to get started on how inefficient the 7700 XT is with those FPS numbers compared to the 245 watts that it draws in usage. And lastly, we have the lonely ARC B580. For being over $300, it comes in at $350, it barely kept up with the RTX 4060 in most applications at a much higher power draw. Unfortunately, it's just not a great choice in the overall list of options. So there you have it my numbers-based GPU tier list for 2025. If you're going for the absolute best GPU you can get under $500, get the 5060 Ti 16 gig, you're not gonna be disappointed. If you're super budget conscious, but you want a modern GPU, the Arc B570 is a great option at just $225. And don't forget, there are new GPUs coming out, the RX 9060 XT and the RTX 5060 non-Ti are both coming out really soon. So keep those in mind when you're looking at a budget-friendly GPU. Hope this helps, and we'll see you on the next one.